I didn't discover the power of Christ until I left the church. Until I was done with Christianity, that was the time, that was the moment when I really discovered the true power of Christ. I was, I was brought up in the church, but being brought up in the church is not a guarantee that you're going to understand what Christ is about. Because the way it's set up is you get bits and pieces of of the Bible when you're in a religious setting. At best, you might have um, detailed Bible studies, etc. But nobody in any church anywhere is going to read through an entire Bible with you. And even if they come up with their slogans, go through the Bible in a year, they're not going to go through the Bible in a year. No pastor has ever done that. No bishop has ever done that. Not to my knowledge, not to my experience. Have they literally every single Sunday preached okay, Genesis 1-1 this week, Genesis 1-2 next week, Genesis 1-3 the week after. I don't think there's a pastor on the planet that preached the entire Bible verse for verse. So if you're a Christian and you're relying more so on what you're getting from church, you're lost already. It doesn't matter how much you offer praises. It doesn't matter how many hallelujahs you say. That has nothing to do with whether or not you conquer in this life. Praise is just one aspect of understanding vibration. Many in the crowd were praisers. But not all praisers were disciples. They were, the cheering crowd was the cheering crowd. The crowd didn't have power. It was Jesus and the disciples that had power. It wasn't the crowd, the cheering, praising, tambourine, swinging crowd. They weren't the ones healing people. They weren't the ones resurrecting people from the dead. As the text uh, dictates, <clears throat> it wasn't at all that. In fact, when you go to the Old Testament and you start at the beginning, you're going to find that right after creation, the moment civilization begins, you start finding magic. You find magic first, not faith. You start finding magic first. These people, Adam lived to be like 960 something years old before he died. That's magic. There's no amount of praise that's going to cause you to live for a whole millennium. There is no amount of praise. There is no amount of worship. And I know a lot of Christians will actually disagree with this. And for good reason, because... The principality known as enthusiasm and known as charisma, which the term Christ generates from, these things dominate the spirit of the crowd. See, the church is really not there to bring disciples and make disciples. That's what they want to do. That's what they would like to do. But if you look in the stories, how many disciples was coming out of the synagogue in Jesus' day? How many disciples were in and about the synagogue and how often was Jesus really in church not at all he only came there to teach and to heal but he wasn't staying all day he wasn't waiting for the choir he wasn't waiting for this pastor that pastor he wasn't running to the church when a particular preacher came to town he wasn't doing any of that so the power of Christ really took place outside of the building outside of the church so this is why I say the moment I went outside of the structure that was the moment i began to understand the true power and experience the true power of christ and at that same time and this is roughly 12 years ago so i'll connect this with my saturn of return that happened when i was 28 which happens when everyone is 28 regardless of who they are saturn of return is a cosmic principle where you basically go to hell as a human you go to hell at 28 everybody does whether they realize it or not some experience of hell will be there your life will, and I'm not trying to predict bad things for anybody that's in their early 20s, but what I'm saying is what we, what psychologists would term an identity crisis is actually your Saturn of return. The return of your need to oppose something. Look in Ecclesiastes. There's not always a time for love. There is also a time for hate. There's not always a time for peace. There is also a time for war. There is not also a time to gather stones. There's a time to throw those things. There's not always a time 
to hold on. Sometimes you have to let go. And the brainwashing that takes place in a lot of religions is to negate the negative side, is to negate <clears throat> the opposite side. So it would be love, 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 love. Now, try to find a congregation on the planet that preaches hate. You won't. The only thing they'll say is that the Lord hates evil. That's as far as they go with hate. They're not going to teach you how to be a hater, which is subjecting a lot of them to becoming haters for a lot of other petty reasons. Because hate wasn't really dealt with and mastered. And these opposite things, these opposing polarities, they weren't addressed. So you'll only get to know them outside of the church. And the reason why the people inside of the church won't venture on to know these things is because they're under the brainwashing that anything outside of their Bible is taboo. This is going to limit you, though. Because now we're talking, now we're in an age where you should have been past the whole idea of facing your demons. You at this point, you should you should be integrating your demons now and knowing how to use them for, t for particular purposes. Jesus wasn't susceptible to the demons, but the demons knew that at any point they could be used in any way possible uh, through Christ and with Christ. This is why they always said, what are you doing here? Have you come before the appointed time? Don't send us into the bottomless pit. Let us go into the pigs. When when he took when he took legion out of the man who was in the cemetery in Gadara, what did the demon say? Uh, don't cast us away. What are you doing here? We know who you are. And a lot of times Christ had to cut the demons off to keep them from revealing to the common people what his true identity was. So what does that mean? The people that was wearing the clergy collars and the crowns and the long robes with the incense bowls, they didn't know anything about who God's real identity was. They didn't know these things. All they knew was their ceremonies. All they knew was their worship. They're actually worshiping each, each other. Quiet is kept. They didn't know these things. This is why Jesus was shutting the demons up because the demons were going to reveal who he really was to the people and reveal what I am really means. And what they were really trying to shut him up from saying was that if you're a human being, you're God. Because God is in all his fullness is living his experience through every single human being. And this is what they don't want you to know because they don't want you to have power. Because if you realize that you're God, because God is God, he made you God in your particular form, with your particular name, with your particular attitude. Once you find that out, you don't need church anymore. You don't, you don't need it. You, you would be going there for moral support at best for those that are still stuck in the matrix. You would just be in the back row. So to integrate your demons and to know how to use them is something that you can only learn on the left hand path. And it can't be taboo for you because if it's taboo for you, you're going to be like a person who's grown and still afraid of the boogeyman or still believes in the tooth fairy or still sucks their thumb or still, you know, whatever the case, it still plays with G.I. Joe's at, 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 at 50. This is how you'll be looked at. And this is actually what people are turning into when they don't leave the church. Am I trying to tear down the church and believers and all of that? No. Let your temple of worship be your temple of worship. But I can tell and I always could tell being a master teacher in the church myself is what I always was since the age of 17. The very pinnacle of what a preacher personifies in the Christian church, I was easily that because I was put on this planet with left hand path energy. I was born with my third eye open. I was born a mystic. I was born a wizard. So the right hand path was very easy for me because I was already predisposed to be this way. God already put me on this planet with an awareness that I am him and that he is me. Just like he's everybody else. But it just, it was the luck of the draw. It was favor. It was a blessing undeserved. It was grace. It was mercy. It was his divine will to set it up like this. Where I just came on the planet knowing these things. That I literally kicked myself into this world. 
I was C-sectioned out. So I was never born. You know, in order to be born, you have to pass, you know, you have to pass through the vagina into the world from the womb that way. You have to pass from between the legs into the world. This is what it means to be born on a physical perspective. I was not born. I didn't come into the world that way. It took knives to get me out. It took blades to get me out. Knives. I was cut out and lifted out. So in my infant state, being being brought into this world, I was raptured. I wasn't born. I was raptured. And anybody who's ever been C-sectioned in this world has been raptured. They have not been born. You have not been born. Yeah, you're here. Yes, you came into the world, but technically you were not born. So you are already predisposed to not be of this world. You know, when you come into the world off of a C-section, they try to set up your environment as an infant to to uh, resemble the womb, to try to bring you back into the world that you was in. And this is a ripple effect, a stones drop in the ocean. So these ripples throughout my life was me being lifted into other levels. But the the boundaries and the barriers and the curtain and the veil was always torn and cut to raise me to be a cut above the rest. And the reason why I'm selected to be a cut above the rest is because I'm designed a certain way. I'm designed with certain activations that prompt me to do it this way. All the children and all the babies, they called me Jesus in the church. This is what they were. They knew what my name was, but they they referred to me as Jesus. And I was the person selected in every passion play. I was Jesus from the age of 14 to about 33 years old. Every year I was Jesus every year. They could have picked anybody. There was people who would, quote unquote, look more like Jesus, according to, you know, um, Afrocentric designs. Sure. But those people weren't necessarily or may not have been necessarily perceived as being a Christ. You know, they were on their path to try and be a Christian. I never tried to be a Christian. I came here as a Christ. I'm a Christ. I'm not a Christian. I'm a Christ. That's something higher. Christians are trying to find out about Christ and trying to live in a way that would quote unquote impress Christ. And nothing can impress Christ because that's not how Christ works. He's not it he's not even a he. It's not even a person, y'all. Jesus is a person. Jesus operated in the Christ, but the Christ is not a person. Christ is a title. I said this, I've been saying this to Christians for a very long time. And the moment I say it, they drool and go into, you know, the moment that seed is scattered on the road, the bird known as Satan swoops down and plucks that thing right out of their heart. Doesn't even never let it germinate. The only people that I could really reach with this level of truth was people outside of the church, people who were not subjected to the brainwashing, people who were not made to be little children while they're grown, because that's what's happening. Look at how pathetic this is. All right. You'll have groups of people. In their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and every year or every few years, they're ready to submit their whole spiritual authority and submit their whole life to some kid who hasn't lived a lick of life experience. They're fresh out of seminary. The only thing they know are their books. They don't even have common sense yet because the mind power that it takes to get all of these degrees, you're going to sacrifice common sense. I've been to college. I have a degree too. You sacrifice common sense when your head is always in those books because you can't have your head in the books and live in the world at the same time. You can't. You can't do it. This is why a lot of people join fraternities and sororities because it's a world behind a world. 
<clears throat> you can live in your boys club and your girls club because with all the studying and all the schooling that you have to do, you don't really have time to live life experience. So they created a Greek, a Greek shortcut to backdoor you on the way to the top so that you don't have to go through the grind of 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 making five dollars an hour. You don't have to go through the grind of picking up the trash. No, you're going to go straight to college, to the Ivy League. And from that point on, you're a pretty boy or a pretty girl. At that point, you're diva out. It's diva time. Don't let anybody tell you different. Yeah, right. They're not a gang. Why are they throwing up hand signs then? I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not a friend of the world at all. I'm friendly. I'm compassionate. I'm a beautiful soul. But I'm not a friend to this world at all. I am the enemy. I'm the enemy of everything that seeks to destroy man. From the mind down. So you have to know how to be Satan. And you have to know when to be the devil. Jesus knew when to be Satan. Jesus knew when to be the devil. When those Pharisees uh, kept oppressing the people. What did what did who was Jesus to them? They called him Beelzebub. They called him the prince of the demons. They gave him the title because that was that was what he represented to them. And that's what he had to be to the Jewish synagogue at that time, because they were destroying the people and robbing the people blind. They were the religious mob. They were the religious mob. So Jesus had to be Satan to them. And Satan means adversarial force. He had to oppose that. How else are you going to set the captives free? If you don't oppose the captors. Using that opposite energy. That is what is called Satan. But they don't teach this. They keep talking about the devil is defeated. And stomp on the devil. You know what you're really stomping on? You're stomping on your power to resist. You're stomping on your power to think for yourself. This is what terms like Satan and Lucifer mean. They really mean to think for yourself. And I know a lot of church folks are not going to believe that because they only believe what their leaders have taught them they haven't read a lick of anything on their own they're living by hearsay and they're not only are they going to be lost they're lost they're lost already and yes i'm ranting because i'm tired of seeing my people powerless relying on a false god they don't even know who they're worshiping because there is a certain God that's put over religion that is not at all the most high, but he's allowed to have the title of the most high. Read Daniel when you see the abomination that causes desolation standing in the holy place, run for the hills. Nobody ran for the hills. They stayed with the monster of desolation that sits in the temple of God claiming to be God, but is not God. And that pisses me off. So I decided to take. My gifts, my talents, my skills, my mission and my purpose elsewhere. I decided to start looking for fishermen. I'm not looking for people who already know all the church songs. I'm not even looking for people who've been there before. I'm looking for people who are free from that. I'm looking for people who can who can have a religious, who can have a theological conversation without saying my pastor said and without saying my bishop said. I'm waiting for those people. Where the F are they? I mean, really, where are they? Out in the world. All these people that you cursed because they're Wiccans and all of that. They, they, they're closer to God than you are. All right. I got bad news for a lot of you um, Bible thumpers who don't open the Bibles you carry. All it is is a purse for your pens and your papers. You don't read it. You don't know what's in there. Anytime I talk, talk Bible talk with a lot of these Christians who keep a Bible clutched at their side, they don't know what's in it. They just carry it thinking it's like a, a lucky charm. It's not a lucky charm. yo. It's not a lucky charm. If you don't know what's in there, put the book down. All right. <laughs> You're carrying extra baggage, really. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drop it right there because I know that was long winded. But I'm hoping I can wake somebody up to think for themselves and understand that you're not going to know God for real at all unless you approach him without a middleman. You don't need a middleman. You just need to find out who he is on your own, whichever way you go with it. And don't let anybody judge you 
for the path that you take because all roads lead to God. Otherwise, God would not be called the all. The all extends to all directions. The all extends to all philosophies, all thought. What does it say about love? Love believes all things, hopes all things, cherishes all things. This is what it says about what love is because love is above all. But if you secretly hate expanding out of what you've learned already, then you're not operating in the full spectrum of love. You're operating in contraction, a contract. You are contracting. You're not expanding. You're contracting. Anytime somebody brings a new idea to you, you shut it down. Because you're saying, you know, either your pastor or Jesus didn't say that or God didn't say that or the word didn't say that. You don't know the word to be saying what the word says. I've debated too many of these bishops and pastors and elders. And it's, it's pathetic how how limited their knowledge of their very own theology is. And the ones at the seminary, the ones who are truly the masters, they're even darker. Because they know this. They know what I know. They know what I'm telling you. But they can't make their money unless they keep that kind of information away from the people. Because the moment they tell everybody everything, the tithes are going to stop. And people are going to realize that um, it's going to go originally like it was. Where people met in each other's houses um, to build upon the Lord. They met in their homes. There was no building fund. They went down to uh, they went down to Johnny's house. We going to Johnny's house tomorrow to build, and then after that we going to Susan's house tomorrow to build, and then after that we going over to Ray Ray's house to build, and after that we going to Pookie's house to go build. That's how it went. That's how it really is. That's how it needs to go. What you think this quarantine is about? About what you think? Why do you think these quarantines happen? Because the allness of God is tired. Is tired of this play because that's what it is. It's a play. People dress up, you know what I mean? They dress up and they do their thing. They walk around in a circle and then another circle and then another circle, drop some money, walk in another circle, go up some steps, go down some steps, walk in a circle, walk in a straight line. What that sound like to you? That sound like a ceremony to me. And you need to be doing these or whatever kind of ceremony you do. Just do it at home, but make sure it's something you you created yourself. So I invite you to the left hand path. I invite you to all of that new age stuff that they're talking about, because all of that stuff is real. I invite you to astrology because a lot of people don't even know who they are because they don't know what God made them to be. There's people who already studied this stuff all the way back in Genesis. It tells you I put this, the, st the sun, moon and stars in the sky to mark off the days and the seasons and the years. But also for signs. What do you think the signs are? What do you think the signs are? Don't act like it's not there. Don't act like God didn't verify the zodiac before he was out of Genesis. Don't act like that. No, oh, it's a horoscope and we don't believe in that. New stargazers. Knock it off. Please. Because you're being lazy. You keep waiting for a new leader that's only half your age. Who has no life experience You're waiting on them To tell you what You know more than them They're coming out of seminary the, the boy only 25 What does he know You 55 But he's your leader Come on So my Saturn of return was important I had to become I had to integrate my demon Because my angel was getting his ass beat Part of my Part of my Part of my profanity But he was He was you know what I mean? <laughs> My angel was getting the, the, the brakes beat off of him because I felt like I was only being half of myself because I wasn't <clears throat> I wasn't really venturing out. You know, although I did learn, you know, read a lot of different things in in my Christian walk, like a lot of different texts it's not like now. It's not like after 28. It's not like 28. And up. Everything but everything before age 28. It was like I was only living half of myself <clears throat> and everything after 28 is like I fully integrated myself. It took time. It took time. <clears throat> and right now I'm I'm 40. So that's exactly 12 years later. And that's, again, 
the number of authority, not the number of the universe. It's not 13. It's not the all uh, seeing number. But it's the one right beneath it. It's the 12. You know what I mean? It's the order that comes up under the all seeingness. The order that comes up under the omniscience. And again, you know, speaking of numbers, it took a numerologist to wake me up to the truth. To let me know that that was my Saturn of return. Because at 28, I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was bugging. I thought I was uh, influenced by the world. I thought I was a traitor. I thought I was, a, you know, a heathen. I thought I was a blasphemer. You know, I thought I was backsliding. You know what I mean? I had all these terms for myself at 28. I was like, I'm going crazy. Why why am I not feeling any of this anymore? Why do I why do I not like this? Why do I feel like it's all in the way? I was asking these questions and it took a numerologist out of a Christian family um <clears throat> that I was dealing with at the time in this particular uh woman who was the numerologist was black sheep by the family of blind saints she was the one with the numbers she was the one mailing the letters from dc mailing the letters to the house addressed to tori and i opened it up numerology codes and she wasn't wrong and i had never seen anything like that before i had a she gave me a personal reading i didn't know i didn't know anything about a personal reading based off of numerology and tarot i didn't know i was the reverse hero fan i didn't know anything about any of these things and i'm still very rusty at it i'm still in the process of trying to study all this stuff so i'm playing catch up i'm playing catch up you know because i was all caught up in some other stuff i was all caught up in and it was hard to leave that reality because i was the one that was actually being worshipped a lot of times uh, in christian communities quiet is kept too yes i was a center of worship that was another reason why i stayed away because y'all if you think you want praise from people but it's gonna break your heart if you have any kind of heart if you have any kind of heart it's gonna break because you're gonna be like well you know what you know you're a person too you're a person too you're awesome too i'm not the only one who can do this i'm not the only one who is great you know and you and you just saw like how people would grovel at you and kind of look at you like this mythic figure and you know it's 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 poisonous it's poisonous so i invite you to know thyself for thyself because in the end you're by yourself 